Hey, you seen the quartermaster anywhere? You're a miracle worker. You found them, then brought them back safely. Oh, here now is one of the original great American novels, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Mark Twain was a wry observer of the human condition and a sharp-witted satirist. What would his take on the divisions of our society be, I wonder? Here we have what is known as the written Torah, an introduction, if you will, to the origin story of the Jewish people, and part of the larger concept of the Torah that includes all their teachings, culture, and practice. A crucial tome of religion and culture. Our collection is growing by leaps and bounds, <laughs> primarily due to your leaping and bounding. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> you are a stoic, aren't you? Damn, <laughs> thought you'd have a better sense of humor than Thalia. <laughs> Oh, well. Aiden, it's such a wonderful day. Let's dispense with all this dreary philosophizing, shall we? <laughs> okay. I see you brought back the adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Tell me, Aiden, as a pilgrim, are you an adventurer like Huckleberry Finn? Every day out there was an adventure, I can tell you that. Not always a pleasant one, though. There was plenty of unpleasantness in Huckleberry Finn. In that case, call me Huck. And I'll be your Mary Jane. Tell me, Aiden. Do you have a thing for older women like Huck did? <laughs> Excuse me? Never mind. I am just glad you've retained your sense of humor in the face of this world's darkness. And... Don't ever think I take for granted the danger you surely encounter every day. Mm, the danger's out there, Thalia. Here with you. No reason not to relax. That's how I feel when you're around, Aiden. Thank you for that. I'll anxiously await your return. Before you go... get more respect when I became a peacekeeper.
We have some. Were you a pilgrim? I know, a female pilgrim. There weren't many of us. But that's why I was so good at it. No one would recognize me as a pilgrim. Some men thought that as a woman, it would be easier to deceive me. Rob me. My fast reflexes and sharp dagger taught them otherwise. How'd you end up in Villador? I got this goddamn job. A guy wanted me to deliver a package to Villador. To some woman who was well known before the outbreak. Apparently she played video games professionally. Weird job, eh? Anyway, the guy paid me a lot, but on one condition. I couldn't know what was in the package. And that was my big mistake. I carried this damn thing for 50 kilometers, and with each step it got heavier. I sneaked into Villador, found this woman, and delivered the package. She opened it in front of me. Turned out, it was a jar, with a human head inside. Whose head? I don't really know. I got the fuck out of there right quick. Is that why you quit the life? Well, I felt that... Actually... That I was constantly running away from... Something. Maybe from myself. This is a big city. Even a pilgrim can belong here. Nobody judges you for what you were before, like they do in the smaller towns. Who you used to be beyond the walls. What you once did. They kept you on the move. You can disappear in the city. That's how I found my place. And what about you, Aiden? Don't you want to stop running? Yeah, maybe someday. But first, I have to finish what I started here. I understand. Just remember this. You can't run away from yourself. Good luck, Pilgrim. Welcome, stranger. What is this place? I concoct and sell everything. From healing elixirs to powerful wards against the infected. Ah, uh, snake oil then. You will address the bubble with respect. Oh, will I? Don't mind Corvus. He is, uh, overprotective. Tell me more about your so-called elixirs. By the looks of what's in these jars, someone's been scavenging graveyards. They are talking about my ingredients, both rare and potent. I combine them to create wonders. Some emit a scent that can cause an infected to come running, no matter what lies in its path. Others, pheromones that can cause most infected to flee madly. And still others grand fists of fire that will burn an opponent with each blow. Well, theatrics aside, I'm intrigued. Uh, tell me about your healing elixirs. I sell anything, from salves for the grievous wounds to potions that cure illness and disease. A young man like you might wish to try my virility boosting. Uh, pass. I have my doubts, but I'm willing to try some of these items. I'm sure you'll be delighted. My elixirs are worth every coin. And they're derived from monsters? In part, yes. Some unusual mutations in rare creatures produce hormones with special properties. When I combine them with the right herbs and other compounds, I can create both powerful weapons and healing items. As it happens, I am running out of some key ingredients and could use some help. If you are willing to do some hunting for me. Why don't you send this guy? I am no errand boy. Hosh Garvas, this is why we're running low on ingredients and customers. You keep scaring people away. I'm not scared of monsters. Or your boy here. It's settled then. If you can hunt, I'll buy what you bring me. You stand to profit handsomely. 
What do you need? First, the brain of the rare demolisher. It contains a special enzyme. But how would you even know about that? The answer to that question might well drive even a man as strong and resilient as you. Stark raving mod. Right. Whatever. Where is it? A demolisher considerably larger than others of its ilk has been sighted in the park. Quite near. Bring me its head and I'll pay you well. One demolisher head. Coming up.
Yeah. 